Cooking is a life skill, but in an age of abundant food options, we forget the benefits of cooking. Cooking enables us to control our nutrition, bring family and friends together, improve our physical and mental health, all while making delicious food. That is, if you know how to. And that's the problem. Many of us never learned how to. Without guidance, cooking is intimidating. Recipes can be easy to follow, but personally, I don't feel like I'm building a true foundation of how to cook good food. As your average guy, I wanted to learn the how-to of good cooking. I wanted to be able to glance in the refrigerator, see what I'm working with, and transform whatever it is into a tasty meal, which is why the book Salt, Fat, Acid, and Heat, Mastering the Elements of Good Cooking, caught my eye. The author, Samin Nasrat, a chef and food writer, began her culinary journey in college, working at a well-known restaurant in Berkeley, California, called Chez Panisse. As she immersed herself in the art and study of cooking, she began to see patterns within the intricacies of daily changing seasonal menus which define the food of Chez Panisse. These patterns were the sprouting roots of a theory which filtered her culinary thinking. Making consistently great food could be defined by a simple checklist, salt, fat, acid, and heat. These four elements guided basic decision making in any dish, no matter what. She first invented her theory at the age of 20, but her pursuit of flavor led her all around the world. After 15 years of studying, cooking, and perfecting her craft, she returned equipped to write this book. The essence of this book is simple. Learn to navigate salt, fat, acid, and heat, and you can make anything taste good. But was it really that easy? Could I too become a master of all four elements? Water. Earth, fire, air. Ooh, I mean, salt, fat, acid, and heat. Long ago, my cooking was trash. Then everything changed when, okay, okay, in all seriousness. It was something I had to see for myself. You see, I'm all about foundational books. Books that lay down the algorithms to problem solve within a discipline. In this case, the algorithm to great food. And now that I've read it, I can assure it was one thing, life-changing. Why salt, fat, acid, and heat? Think of any dish that you love to eat. It probably has an ideal balance of salt, fat, and acid. Since the human body can't produce certain essential forms of salt, fat, and acid, our palates have evolved to seek these three elements. This creates a universal appeal to food with salt, fat, and acid all in balance, no matter the cuisine. First, salt. The primary role of salt is to amplify flavor. Salt's relationship to flavor is multidimensional. Used properly, salt minimizes bitterness, balances out sweetness, and enhances aromas, heightening our experience of eating. This doesn't just mean using more salt, rather add it in the right amount, at the right time, and in the right form. You'll notice this common theme with all the essential elements. The distribution of salt throughout food can be explained by osmosis and diffusion. Osmosis is the movement of water across the cell wall to reach equilibrium. For example, water moving from the saltier side to the less salty side. Diffusion is the movement of a substance to equilibrium. A basic rule is high concentration to low concentration. The way that I think about this is diffusion is the movement of a substance from higher concentration to lower concentration, while osmosis is just the specific movement of water from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. For example, salt moving from a saltier environment to a less salty environment. The three most valuable tools to encourage salt diffusion is time, temperature, and water. By salting proteins, such as meat early, you give it enough time to diffuse into the muscle, where it dissolves strands of protein into a liquid retaining gel, thus making for more moist meat at the same time it builds flavor from the inside out. When salting, make sure to salt to taste. This simply just means that as you cook your food, taste it and adjust the salt accordingly. A simple but revolutionary tip for me. It's crazy how the simplest things can often bring the most amount of change. Sources of salt. Second, fat. 
Fat carries flavor, conveys aromas, and enhances flavors to our palates that would otherwise go unnoticed. Fat coats the tongue, allowing various aromatic compounds to stay in contact with our taste buds for longer periods of time, intensifying and prolonging our experience of various flavors. Fat is essential for achieving the full spectrum of flavors and textures of good cooking. Fat can only ever be as delicious as the fat with which it's cooked, which is why it's important to cook with quality fats. Fat plays three distinct roles in the kitchen. As a main ingredient, cooking medium, or seasoning. As a main ingredient, fat is a source of rich flavor and of a particular desired texture. For example, olive oil contributing to a grassy flavor and rich texture to pesto. As a cooking medium, fat can be heated to extreme temperatures, allowing the surface temperature of foods cooked in them to climb to astonishing heights. For example, butter or oil used to saute vegetables. And as a seasoning, it adjusts flavor or enriches the texture of a dish. For example, sour cream on a baked potato. Cuisines are distinguished by their fats. Since fat is the foundation of so many dishes, choose culturally appropriate fats to flavor food from within. Use the wrong fat and food will never taste right, no matter how carefully you use other seasonings. Sources of fat. Next, acid. Acids are any substance that register under seven on the pH scale. The best acid indicators we have are our tongues. Anything that tastes sour is an acid. The true value of acid is balance. It grants the palate relief and makes food more appealing by offering contrast. Acid is salt's alter ego. While salt enhances flavors, acid balances them not allowing certain ingredients to overwhelm and take over the character of the dish. Foods that are the most enjoyable to eat cause our mouths to water. Of the five basic tastes, acid makes our mouths water the most as the saliva balances out the acidity, which is actually dangerous for our teeth. The more acidic the food, the more saliva rushes in. Thus, acid is an integral part of many of our most pleasurable eating experiences. Many iconic dishes are defined by their specific acids. A peanut butter sandwich is not the same unaccompanied by the tang of jelly, and tacos aren't the same unaccompanied by salsa or guacamole. As with all good cooking, the best way to use acid is to taste over and over again. Using acid is a bit like using salt. If something is noticeably sour, then it's probably got too much acid. But if the food tastes bright and clean, the acid balance is spot on. Sources of acid. Finally, heat. Heat is the element of transformation. When exposed to heat, protein threads first denature and then clump more tightly, entrapping pockets of water to create structure in food. No matter what you're cooking or what heat source, the aim is always the same. Apply heat at the right level and the right rate so that the surface of the food is done cooking at the same time as the interior. Just as with salt, fat, and acid, the first steps to getting the results you want is to know what you're after. Know the results you seek so that you can take the proper steps to achieve them. You can think of your goal in the kitchen in terms of flavors and textures. How heat works. Food is made up of four basic types of molecules, water, fat, carbohydrates, and proteins. And as previously mentioned, heat is energy. As food is heated, the molecules within it begin to speed up, colliding with each other as they go. As molecules gain speed, they also gain the power to break free of the electrical forces uniting their atoms. Some atoms can split off and join up with other atoms to create new molecules. This process is called a chemical reaction, and the chemical reactions initiated by heat affect the flavor and texture of food. Water is an essential part of practically all foods. Cook most of its water out and food will become crisp or dry. Leave water in or add water as you cook to make food moist and tender. At the heart of cooking lies decision making. And the primary decision regarding heat is whether to cook food slowly over gentle heat or quickly over intense heat. The way to decide this is to consider tenderness. For some foods, the goal is to create tenderness, while for others, it's to preserve innate tenderness. In general, foods that are already tender, some meat, eggs, delicate vegetables, should be cooked as little as possible to maintain tenderness. Foods that start out tough or dry and need to be hydrated or transformed to become tender 
grains, starches, tough meats, dense vegetables, will benefit from longer, more gentle heat. With salt, fat, and acid, your tongue can guide you as you cook. However, with heat, other senses such as sight, smell, hearing, and touch take on greater importance. Other concepts. Improvising with salt, fat, acid, and heat. Answer the basic questions for each of the elements to understand how to proceed. How much, when, in what forms, and will the ingredients benefit most from gentle or intense heat? Balance, layering, and restraint. Though each dish on its own should be balanced in salt, fat, and acid, there's a larger picture to also consider. The meal must be balanced overall. Some examples include preceding rich and heavy dishes with light and fresh ones, or maybe a bready appetizer may lead to less heavy starches throughout the rest of the meal. Scientists have found that we prefer to eat foods that engage our senses with these kinds of contrasts. Light and dark, sweet and salty, crunchy and silky, hot and cold, and sweet and sour. Incorporate contrasting textures, flavors, ingredients, and avoid repetition. With my newfound knowledge, I cultivated a natural sense of curiosity with the dishes I was making. Where do these ingredients fit? Are they salt, fat, acid? How will they contribute to the overall balance I'm seeking to create within the dish and the meal in whole? These four essential elements of cooking served as a scaffold to build my cooking knowledge. For me, I began to feel in control of my cooking. I saw immediate improvements and cooking felt fun. As mentioned earlier in this video, the benefits of cooking move beyond just the plate. Not only does it build a sense of community with those you can share the experience with, but it genuinely improves your health. In deeper ways, you may not know. I recently learned about the gut-brain connection. To put this simply, the gut, its microbes, and the brain are connected in a complex communication regulation system called the gut-brain axis. In fact, it's so deeply intertwined that scientists now term our gut as our second brain, which shows you how important it is to make healthy food choices as it directly affects our mental health. So the way that I think about this is if I can make tasty food no matter the dish, then I can make tasty healthy food, inclining me to make more healthy food choices, which improves my gut health and microbiome, which influences my emotional state, which influences my overall well-being, and the food schmacks. The first half of this book lays down the foundation of how to cook through salt, fat, heat, and acid. And the second half is a more traditional cookbook with lessons on how to cook based on salt, fat, heat, and acid. There are a ton more tips to transform your understanding of cooking than I could include in this video. Like I deadass took notes. I genuinely think this book will result in a wave of great home cooks. And the way that Samin Nasret incorporates her personal experience makes it such a fantastic read. Samin, if you ever somehow end up watching this video, I'm down to cook with you, so let's let's make it happen. If you found value in this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. I hope this video inspired someone to pick up the book or maybe even start the habit of cooking. As this book beautifully exemplifies, cooking is not as complex as you may think. I drastically improved my cooking and decision-making in the kitchen. Learn to navigate salt, fat, heat, and acid, and you can too.